So to start off, um, the series is a sci-fi slash comedy. So how would you describe playing the roles in the series that combines two genres that we normally usually don't see? I try to not, and maybe this is a limitation as an actor, but I try not to think about genre too, too much mm -hmm. because then I, I, I think if I think about genre too much, then I start sort of imitating my idea of a show that already exists as, mm -hmm. to post, as opposed to making a new show that doesn't yet exist and, and bringing my own kind of instincts to bear on it. But maybe that just means that I'm like <laughs> neglecting my responsibilities. But yeah, I just try to always connect with some sort of basic the true thing about the character that I think is funny and then and then approach it through that as opposed to from an outside in kind of way if that makes sense yeah I think uh, I think it's really hard to to kind of play a genre or, like yeah. I said I think that whenever I even like auditioning if you get a breakdown that says this is a so-and-so type you end up just uh, doing a really bad impression it's like death and I've learned that the hard way so and so rather than thinking about the genre, I think for me with this one, at least I was try just trying to get a hold of the tone. But again, like Zach said, it's kind of its own beast, especially when you're at the beginning of something, you want to set the tone. So it's a kind of combination of saying, OK, how do I fit in so I don't look like I'm in the wrong show? But also, how do I be part of creating what this show actually is um, tonally? And that can be both terrifying and really fun at the same time. It's almost like the same in real life. Like, have you ever been to an event where you're like, well, how are you supposed to behave at a baby shower? And then you like do that, but it's yeah. like a great recipe to have a horrible time and not connect with anyone. Or like, yeah. what am I, what are you supposed to be like on a first date? It's like, anytime you've got a supposed to, it's like, you're pretty much doomed. Mm -hmm. So since we're still um, on the topic of the series, for both of you, what would you say yeah, like <laughs> what would you I'm say? talking about baby showers so yes get us back <laughs> what would you say makes this series stand out from others that you've worked on or just any in general it's weird to see such sort of small human behavior on such a gigantic celestial scale in other words, you're seeing kind of the like smallest, pettiest, most weakest. Often like sci-fi has a kind of epic proportion where, where the kind of um, characteristics of the people match the scope of the production. Everyone's a hero or a villain or a kind of big, larger than life presence. These people are maybe even smaller than life, but they're in an environment that is uh, huge. And I think that's kind of specific and interesting. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that and I also think the um the 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 set uh is is kind of like a really unique thing it's so big and so um impressive but really oppressive at the same time because we can't leave so it's kind of like a gold cage to play in um the reality is they're constantly keeping that set evolving and bringing it back to life in incredibly creative ways. But just as an actor, just staying on the same set all the time, I kind of find it weirdly comforting at this stage in my life to know what I'm showing up to each day. But it, it does add to the kind of claustrophobia of the, um, of the shoot and of the character's experience, which is kind of fun. So what's one thing that your character does in the show that the both of you feel that you kind of do in real life also? Mac is kind of punchy, like, like he'll get like weird and punchy. And I think like, like I get, I, that happens to me sometimes, like, especially with TV, you end up shooting long days. Sometimes you shoot like 14, 15 hour days, depending on the show. And at like hour 13, I feel like I take leave of my, socially acceptable personality and become like an annoying eight-year-old freak from hell and I think that happens to Matt too. <laughs> uh he does become an annoying eight-year-old freak from hell I see think. see luckily we love annoying <laughs> um I I I would say that um I'm like Billy I I think I think I um, share her kind of pragmatism. She's very practical and logical and 
needs things to get done before she can even entertain a polite word. She just needs first things first. And I can get a bit like that about things that I find important in my life. And so, I love it too. Oh. <laughs> so that helps. So if you were trying to convince someone to come aboard on Avenue 5, how would you describe it to that person? If it was like, you know, an actual real life <laughs> ship. Experience. Well, Zach, actually, your character actually does. You do the adverts for... That's true. That's true. Yeah. Um, I would say, how would you like to experience the disappointment and frustration of Earth, but more so and with the same people in a capsule floating through an endless expanse of nothing? And if that didn't work, I don't know what would. I would say, do you want to be on HBO? <laughs> and then they'd run on like, who said no to that <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> and so lastly so what was what would you say would be the worst thing you can think of if you actually if what was the worst thing that you think would happen if you actually worked your roles in the ship if we actually had those jobs yes like if you actually had those jobs apologies no, that you don't have to apologize. That, that's I was just making sure I understood. Um, what would be the worst thing that would happen? I mean, kind of has happened. I think if I was in a customer service profession, I think I'm. I think I can be a little bit annoyed. Like I'm the son of a therapist, and so I think like in customer service, it's part of your job to treat people's complaints as being very serious mm -hmm. and things to be responded to directly. But I think so often with customer service stuff, like when people are flipping out at waiters or bus boys or concierges or whatever, it's because of some other underlying issue. You know, it's like if someone's yelling at a waiter, it's because they're living in a nightmare of their own creation. And so I feel like if I worked in customer service, I would probably end up just talking about that shit all the time and be like, why are you so, what happened? Like, what did your dad do to you that you're like talking to the mater D like that? Like, and I don't think that would be particularly well received. But I feel like you'd do that anyway, Zach. Just like if you saw someone shouting at a waiter, and even if you didn't ask the question, it, you'd, you'd pose the question in your mind you'd be like i wonder what happened to that dude um, <laughs> yeah maybe how about you if you were an engineer what was the worst that would happen I think the worst thing that could happen for billy ha most of it has happened someone's died the ships failed they're running out of food like all the things that you think oh gosh how how would we come back from that have kind of happened to her but i think one last thing might be that um Ryan was something happened to Ryan that would render him incapable of speaking to the passengers because she knows that that he's the only one that, that will listen mm. they'll listen to so I think that potentially could be the worst thing that could ever happen to her, her on the ship well Zach and Lenora thank you guys so much for taking the time to meet with me today I appreciate the energy, the enthusiasm, and good luck to you guys for the season premiere. And if you're interviewing still all day, I know how that can be. Thank you, Brianna. <laughs> Look back at you. you. Because I <laughs> know how that feels. Yeah. <laughs> you look great. Oh, thank you so yeah. much as well. Thank you. <laughs>